everybody, welcome to West Seattle Christian Church Online. If you are new, welcome. If not, welcome back. Today we are continuing our basic series by talking a bit more about how the Holy Spirit works in our lives by examining the life of Jesus. We've spent the last three weeks going back and forth between Bible Project videos and then back to our teachings discussing the different aspects of what we're covering in those Bible Project videos. And piggybacking off of all of that, uh, as well as the analogy I, I used two weeks ago about impressions, we're going to continue to look at that metaphor, but this time in a positive light. So last time we used the metaphor of marks or impressions that are left on the carpet after you pick up a piece of furniture. And the heavier the furniture, the more weight it has and the longer it sits there, the deeper and more noticeable those impressions tend to be. And uh, I drew the comparison between that metaphor and the marks or impressions that the enemy can leave on our lives, either through our own action or inaction or by the work of others or just the circumstances of life. And things can get pretty heavy. And we said it is the work of the Holy Spirit that lets us do some heavy lifting so that we can hold the proverbial furniture up long enough to let those impressions dissipate and fade away so that they can disappear. Uh, because it's while those impressions are there in our lives that we feel like the heavens are closed. They're just closed to us. And I use that phrase that the heavens are closed to us for when we don't have a sense of God's presence through the Holy Spirit. And likewise, the heavens are open to us when we're our we are aware of the Spirit's presence in our lives. Much like the heavens were opened when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came down and rested on him while the heavens were torn open and all the people heard God's voice that he was pleased with his son. So today I want to press into some of those questions we were left pondering from last time just a bit more. We left off talking about Romans 9 verses 35 through 39, which says that nothing can separate us from God's love. But we asked if that's true, how come it can feel like the opposite sometimes, or in fact, for some, much of the time? Well, have you ever heard the phrase that Christians leak? Yeah, we leak. It's the idea that once we get filled up with the Spirit, we don't just get filled once, but we have to get filled again and again and again and again. But there's an insufficiency uh, with that kind of understanding that we have to be filled with the Spirit over and over again, because there's, there's more to it than that. The Scriptures reveal that being filled with the Spirit is so much more than realizing that every once in a while, I'm empty and I need to get topped up again, like I need a refill. There is another dimension of being filled with the Spirit, and I want to talk about it this way. I think that in the same way that we talked about receiving impression marks from the enemy in our lives, we can also be impressed by Jesus. And what I mean by that is we can let Jesus impress us with His grace and His mercy and His peace and His love and His joy through the Spirit. It's the exact opposite of how we talked about it last week. And that's it. That, that's what it is. We can, we can be so impressed with Jesus and by Jesus. When we start to look at and understand who Jesus is, the Holy Spirit rushes alongside us and inside of us and not only can erase the impressions of the enemy, he can heal the impressions left by the enemy. He fills us up and impresses us with the things of Jesus as well. As I said last week, it's not that Jesus is just an amazing example of how to live life. He is the Lord of life itself. So when we look at him and listen to him and read his word, he comes alongside us through His Spirit and the heavens begin to open up. And the Spirit that came on Jesus begins to come on us and live in us. And I want to get at this today with a story from Mark 5. This is a familiar story to some where Jesus is healing Jairus' daughter and the scene is just utter chaos. There's this large crowd of people. It's just nuts. It's, it's like what it's like at a rock concert in a mosh pit or like California Avenue during Summerfest here in West Seattle. People are running into each other. They're bumping into one another. People are everywhere. And then this woman comes up to Jesus and touches Jesus' robe. And power flows out of Jesus and she's healed. And Jesus is aware of this and he goes, who touched me? And if you and I were in a crowd and that happened, we wouldn't know. How could you possibly feel someone touch your coat, the, the end of a little piece of your coat in a large crowd that's bumping into each other? And there's something about this for me that I want to relate to you about the power of the Holy Spirit that I'm trying to wrap my head around and wrap my heart around. And I'll put it like this in the form of a question. How aware do you have to be of the flow of the Holy Spirit in you that you can sense when the Holy Spirit flows out of you to bless others? That has given me a lot to think about, perhaps for you as well, because I'm often aware of the Holy Spirit filling me, 
more often because I go from empty or having very little left to, ha- to feeling like I need to be filled, that I, need, I, know, I know I'm empty because I need a refill. But Jesus had the Holy Spirit limitlessly. And it's not like he had something less, like, oh, I better go pray and get filled up again, like you and I might. It's that Jesus was so filled with the Spirit that Jesus gets beyond the, I need to go be filled up by God, to the place where his life automatically overflows with the Spirit coming out of him. I think that's just amazing, especially because he tells his disciples that they can be like him and do what he does, and that goes for us too. So let me say that to you again. Can you imagine coming to a place where you are so filled with the Spirit that instead of regularly going, I'm empty, Lord, please fill me up, that actually what I become more aware of is the Spirit going out of me to bless others. Do you see the difference? And the point is this. That is the fullness that we are told is available to us. And if you don't believe me, we're going to lean into this a little bit more. Let's look at John chapter 5, verse 19. This is right after Jesus heals an invalid man at the pool of Bethesda. And he says this, The son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. I think this is interesting, and I want to press the theological point that I made last week, because I think some Christians out there don't believe this, because it, it, and, and I think they don't believe it because it's a, a lie that the enemy tells us. Jesus was a man who was fully alive to the Spirit, and whatever he experienced is available for us to experience. Do you want to experience what Jesus experienced? That's the question. Be open to it. Spend time with him so you can hear his voice, and then you can do what the Father tells you to do. It's in that attentiveness and action that God will send His Spirit to empower you to do what needs doing. You see, Jesus Jesus never taught this. He never taught, touch my clothes and you'll be healed. (laughs) There, There wasn't a rhyme or reason for how Jesus healed people or did miracles. In other words, there wasn't the same reproducible model that everyone tried to reenact. Like, okay, we're all going to go around now and touch Jesus' robe. That's not what they were saying. The robe touching thing only happened once, as far as we can tell. Uh, with Jesus. So what happened was Jesus was so full of the Spirit that when, when this woman reached out in faith and touched him, the Holy Spirit just overflowed. And we know this with Jesus, that the Holy Spirit is so present within him that it was permeating things around him, like his clothes. That's just amazing. And I think we know this in our own experience as well right now. Like when you're in the presence of someone who is full of the Spirit of God, someone we might say is godly or has this sense of inner peace or a calm within the storms of life. We look at them and we're like, how are they like that? But do you have to touch them to know they're filled with the Spirit? No. You just feel it. You just know it. And here's another story, though. Even though the touching of the clothes thing is not a foolproof model in the Scriptures, there's other things like it that happen. Paul has a similar experience in Acts 19, starting in verse 11. It says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and evil spirits left them. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know or remember this story. Maybe it's new to you. Paul is what is known as a tent maker. He literally made tents for a living so he could go around and share the gospel. And the way that he did that back then was that he would take and make tents out of animal skins. It was dirty work. And he likely would have worn an apron, kind of like where you see the clerks wearing an apron behind the, the counter in Husky Deli down in California. The image here then is that Paul was making tents and wiping the sweat off his forehead, and he's so full of the Spirit that it overflows into his clothes, into the handkerchief he's using and the apron that he's using, and people would take those things that he touched and it would heal them. This, by the way, is why when people lose someone, they'll go and touch that person's clothes to remember the sense of that person, their presence, their smell. Kids will snuggle up on the couch with their mom or dad's sweater or jacket or sweatshirt to feel like they're close. Because these items are more than just stuff or a thing. They are full of the aroma and presence of a person. But Paul is so filled with the presence of the Spirit that it's in his handkerchief and his apron and it it gives healing. The Holy Spirit can overflow into people and and we just know that it's there. We just know that they're full of the Holy Spirit. So here's another one from Acts 5 about Peter, starting in verse 12. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets 
and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. So this isn't even an article of clothing. It's just Peter's shadow. Can you even imagine? What I want you to see here is that Peter has gone far past what Jesus did, in this story at least, which, by the way, Jesus said would happen. He said, you're going to do greater things than these. Peter is so full of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, that his shadow leads to the healing of other people. And again, some of you are going, well, I'm not Jesus, and I'm not Paul, and I'm not Peter. Uh, And that's what we need to unpack just a little bit more today. We have an enemy that wants to keep us in that dimension of doubt and disbelief. But I'm here to tell you that the Spirit is in us too, that same Spirit that was in Jesus and Paul and Peter. Let me use that idea of shadow, jumping off the text about Peter to say this. Our shadow can release whatever overshadows us. How many of you know someone who, when they walk into the room or write something on social or send you an email, how many of you know someone that when they come into the room, it's just like a cloud comes in there with them? Heaven is just closed off and it's even more closed when you're around this type of person or this person. So it's like this overshadowing. And yet we can come to a place where we're full of the spirit. And when we walk into a room, it can transform the shadows in our life and in the lives of others. When Jesus is transformed and transfigured, when he's baptized, the spirit comes on him in the form of a dove. It was seen as an actual bird, a dove. And we're told it came upon him and rested on him and stayed on him. He's baptized with the Holy Spirit, and he stays full of the Holy Spirit. That image of the dove, if we just stay with that for a minute, it's, it's a lot more than a dove, it, you know, just white and purity. I think the dove symbolizes a person, that the Holy Spirit is in relationship with us, with, with, with you and with me. How many of you have been physically in the presence of someone else, like a friend or a family member or a spouse, and even though you're physically in close proximity to them, you can be miles apart. You or that other person can be actually be separate from each other, miles away. You aren't with each other. You're not connected. It could be that you're distracted or they are. It can be even more than that. And I share that with you because I think we have a choice to be fully present with each other and we have a choice to be fully present and open to the Holy Spirit too. And that is the key that we need to wake up to. Have the awareness that the Holy Spirit is in the room with you and within you, and you are awake to that reality instead of closed off. Be fully present. Don't be distant from the Holy Spirit. Like like on game day while you're watching the big play and your spouse is trying to tell you something, you're just not paying attention. You don't hear it. You're not listening. You're not present. Don't do that to your spouse and don't do that to the Holy Spirit. Spirit rested on Jesus and stayed with him all the time. And I think that was a two-way street. The Spirit was present and showed up and Jesus had to show up and be present and choose to be present to the Spirit as well. And so do we. Jesus is saying, through his Holy Spirit, he's saying, be with me. Stop being with all the other things that leave an impression on you and be with me. Stop being with all the things that distract you, the other things that mean the only time you realize you need me is when you've run out of me completely. Stop being with those things and be with me. Let me fill you. The Spirit is given to us without measure. And as we wrap this up, I want to look at one last verse from John 6. Really, we just want to summarize it. But Jesus speaks to a crowd of thousands because there was a point in his ministry where thousands were following him. But then the crowd turns and he gets to a point where what he shares about how God is near to people, it leads people to start to back away from him. And they start doing the opposite with him. They're like, get away. They want to close down their experience with him. And one of those stories is in John 6. He's teaching and speaking and he says, if you want to follow me, I am the bread of life. And you need to eat me and you need to drink me. And people are like, heck no, back off, man. Jesus offended people regularly. How do you know that the Holy Spirit's getting close to you and saying, be with me? Let me explain it like this. You know when you go to the doctor with something that's in pain? Like I have a really bad chronic shoulder. And the doctor will press you (laughs) where it hurts. They want to feel it. And they they want to make you hurt so they know where it is. I've, I've got this bum shoulder and the doctor and the physical therapist, they just kind of, they always find the right spot and boy, does it kill. You know, they're like, does it hurt here? And I'm like, yes, it hurts. How about here? Yes. And that's what Jesus is doing in moments like this in John 6. He's saying, the Father's here. 
Heaven is open to you and you can have more of me. And he comes along and the spirit palpates and presses in on us. And the symptom and the diagnosis is this. When you find yourself saying, I'm too busy. I don't have enough. God doesn't love me. When all those things rise up in us, those are the places where the spirit is diagnosing and the impressions of the enemy and the world is on us. And he's saying, the spirit's saying, let me deal with them. Let me help you. Let me free you from them. So what does it look like to host the Holy Spirit in us? We're going to get to that when it comes to Pentecost 50 days after Easter. We're going to press into this a little bit more. Until then, I'm Worth Wheeler for West Seattle Christian Church Online. Stay rooted and deep in Jesus. Produce good fruit, my friends.